Living Local Carolina with Katie Turner. Local trends, shopping, dining, and more. This is Living Local Carolina. The following portion of Living Local Carolina is sponsored by Beach Injury Lawyers. Well, thanks for joining us today on a very special edition of Living Local Carolina. Right now I'm joined in the studio by three very special guys, Beach Injury Lawyers and Pastor Tim. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves real quick for the audience? Sure. I'm Greg Sloan and uh, I'm an attorney with Beach Injury Lawyers. Hi, I'm Will Parker. I'm also an attorney with Beach Injury Lawyers. Good morning. I'm Pastor Tim Carter with Sunshine Recovery Ministries. All right. So you might be wondering what we're doing here today. And we're going to be talking about uh, bikes and other things that you can run into on the road and things that you need to know, especially during this season here in Myrtle Beach. So take it away. Well, with, with the weather getting warmer and, 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 and the various bike weeks coming up, the, the one thing you're going to see is a lot more motorcycles on the road. And with a lot more motorcycles on the road, you're going to see more accidents and unfortunately uh, more fatalities on the road. Mm -hmm. um, you know, motorcyclists, unfortunately, are you're four times more likely to get injured because you're not surrounded by metal like you are in a car. And in South Carolina, we're in the top five in terms of uh, fatalities in the country. Mm -hmm. um, you're 26 times or more likely to uh, suffer a fatal accident in a motorcycle as opposed, to, uh, as opposed to an automobile vehicle. Goodness. So I'm sure this is something that you guys see quite frequently come across your desk. You know, how do you deal with that? The, I guess during the warmer months, we, we, we see a lot more motorcycle cases coming in. And one of the things that we do see are, one, if you want to look at the top three causes, at least in the in Horry County, the Grand Strand area, it's going to be alcohol, unfortunately. It's going to be speeding. And then it's going to be people who just aren't paying attention and they're pulling out onto the road right in front of a motorcyclist. I know you've seen the yard signs that says look twice, mm -hmm. save a life. Mm -hmm. And, and it is it is so true because really for us, that's the majority of accidents are people pulling directly in front of uh, a motorcyclist. Well, why don't we go a little bit more into why this is important for you guys to educate the public on this as well. Considering the injuries are so much more significant um, involving motorcycles, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you want to do everything you can to get the word out, which like you say, look twice, save a life. Please be careful when you're out driving, especially during the warmer months, because honestly, we would prefer to see less cases. So yeah, um, there's nothing that we can necessarily do except to help educate. But mm -hmm. um, one thing that we see a lot is people that are motorcyclists will come in, they have a motorcycle, um, they have a separate insurance policy on that motorcycle and it's not connected, they don't have underinsured on that. So if someone hits them and they don't have enough insurance, we have to look to the motorcycle, they don't have it there. So therefore they, and let's say they have two or three other cars at, at their home, mm -hmm. we can't then use those policies either. So we just see, we wanna educate people to know that if you have a motorcycle, it's just like any other vehicle, you should have underinsured to protect yourself, particularly when the, when the severity of the accidents are worse. Um, and that will also allow you to use any other vehicle you have um, at your home to, to stack coverages for, so to, because the medical, medical bills are typically 10 times worse at least, mm -hmm. you know, and um, most people don't, don't have great insurance. So you have to protect yourself. I got you. Now, right quick, before we go to the break, Pastor Tim, tell me just a little bit about the organization that you work with. Sunshine Recovery Ministries, we're, we're a nonprofit charity here in South Carolina, the Grand Strand, uh, just helping those that are suffering from drug addiction, alcoholism, and homelessness here. And now we've branched out outside of the Grand Strand area and accepting people from other areas also, just to give them a, a new start for accountability and just to become a productive member of society. And you're an avid biker. Absolutely. And y'all happen to be my attorneys through auto accidents. So it just so happens. It just so happens. It's a great ministry. I, I sit on the board, and so we were happy to have Pastor Tim come on board today. Absolutely. And that, you know, Will being an attorney plus been on our board just kind of helps us. Plus, we have someone very knowledgeable here at the law firm, actually two that can give us answers when we have questions outside of injuries. So uh, it helped us. 
tremendously. Love it. Okay, well, stick with us. We're going to have more right after the break. Well, welcome back to Living Local Carolina, this very special edition, and I'm in the studio with the guys from Beach Injury Lawyers and our guest of honor, Pastor Tim. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Well, thank you. Good morning. Doing great, thanks. Great. All right. Well, we're talking about Pastor Tim and your uh, connection with Beach Injury Lawyers, but also a little bit about what you do. Let's get your background and your story. You know, I come, I come to Merle Beach in 2018 dealing with drug addiction. Um, and just felt led by the Holy Spirit once I gave my life to just stay and work recovery and to help others to overcome that addiction and, and to learn to surrender to Christ and get it out of our willpower to and let the Lord have it. And so in, we, we've been in business now six years. Um, we started a concert of Hope here in Myrtle Beach. That's our biggest fundraiser to help raise money to you know, continue to house them. We house them, we get them to work, we, you know, everything that comes into it. So the Concert of Hope is, you know, our biggest fundraiser for that. But particularly it's just we're a community supported organization that God laid on my heart just to open. And, you know, we funded it and off of donations and out of our pockets. We don't use state or federal grants or anything for that. That's amazing. We've been blessed. Yeah. And 2018, that doesn't seem like it was that long ago, doesn't it? No, but the Lord works. A lot of stuff happened in the <laughs> yeah. last six years. Definitely. Um, just been able to go to seminary school, get a doctorate and a master's, and where God's got me today. Um, it's just amazing. And, and we're here to show anyone that no matter what your past, your background, you can recover. And, and we got a great support group and accountability partners. Just so happens Will is one of my recovery accountability partners. And, and a board of director member. So, you know, working with them and, and being a part of our ministry, it's, it's been a super great support group and, and people that help us. Very cool. And Will, so you have this connection with Pastor Tim too. Kind of elaborate on that. Sure. Well, uh, Pastor Tim uh, was a client. And so we met that way. And a, a lot of times our clients become our friends. We become closer to them. And I really... Um, you know, understood the calls. We're definitely, you know, community focused, and this is something that, you know, is close to my heart. So um, I offered to to be on the board and kind of help help lead to a degree. I do a lot of the grant writing and um, even go to the house and, and with the guys. And um, it's been a, it's been a real blessing, um, more than I even probably thought it would have been in the beginning. But it, yeah, I um, I'm been on the board for four years now, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, so when is the um, when is the concert of hope? So our concert of hope this year we moved it out of September because we kept getting wet every year. So this year <laughs> we're moving it to the second weekend of October. I believe that's October twelfth and thirteenth. Um, we got some phenomenal Christian groups that are coming um, to bring live entertainment. We've got Christian comedians. We've got chalk art, which is a couple out of Virginia that comes in and gives a message while he's painting a picture or drawing a picture. Um, and then they give it away to one of the members out in the audience. Um, but it's, it's a really nice resource event for community resources for those struggling. Very cool. Now, Greg, we haven't heard from you yet. I was, you know, just sitting here listening to, to Tim. I, I've known Tim for probably three years now. And, and I've been involved in a lot of different groups over the years, and I have to tell you, I, I have never met anyone more <laughs> dedicated to the cause than, than Pastor Tim. I mean, he is, it's a 24-7 calling for him. Uh, if you call Pastor Tim, if you know someone who needs help, you pick up the phone and Tim answers. doesn't matter when it is. It could be in the middle of the night. Uh, he's always there. But, but seriously, I, I've never met anyone more dedicated uh, uh, to the cause than you. We're humbled and honored just to be where we are today. Humbled and honored to be alive. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing we want the public to know that, you know, today drugs are killing our children. Mm -hmm. So we, we're trying to get the word out and, and being a part of this group here, it's, it's helped us to open so many doors that we're able to move into other areas. I love that. I mean, one of the things that, that, I mean, regardless of whether you're a business owner, you want to support 
local charities. You want to mm -hmm. support different organizations within the community. And this is one that, that we feel really strongly about. Um, and, and really, it's, it's because of Pastor Tim's leadership um, uh, that we're involved. And we, again, yeah. couldn't, couldn't ask for a better organization to partner up with. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Pastor Tim. Guys, after this break, we have another type of motor vehicle to talk about. So you want to stick around to hear more about it. Well, thanks for sticking with us guys today on Living Local Carolina. I'm joined in the studio by the guys from Beach Injury Lawyers. Thanks for joining me today. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we are going to get right into it. We're talking about different motor vehicles. We've been talking about motorcycles. Obviously, Bike Week is a huge thing here, but there are other motor vehicles that people need to be aware of. Golf carts. Yeah. <laughs> very, very popular uh, in the Grand Strand. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as a matter of fact, the other night someone was asking me, um, about what rules and regulations apply to golf carts. And the way I explained it was, it's just like driving a car. Mm -hmm. You have to have it registered with the South Carolina Highway Department. You have to have it on your insurer so it needs to be insured. Mm -hmm. You have to abide by the speed limit. Now, it's a Myrtle Beach ordinance. You cannot operate a golf cart. I believe Surfside Beach Garden City is the same way. But you cannot operate a golf cart after dark. You, can only mm -hmm. operate the golf cart during uh, daylight hours, and you can't drink and drive. At least you can't be under you can't be under the influence um, in a golf cart. And, mm -hmm. and even though we, we don't do criminal law, we we're just we're a solely a, a personal injury firm. We get calls all the time from people who have gotten um, charged with DUI on golf carts, and mm -hmm. and virtually every one of them will say. I didn't know you could get a DUI in a golf cart. And let me assure you, you can, you can. Yeah. Um, and the same penalties apply uh, with driving under the influence as a golf cart, same with a, same with a car. Well, I was so, gonna ask y'all, do either of y'all have a golf cart? <laughs> My wife bought one two weeks ago. So, oh, okay. So, so yes, yes, we, we, had, we now have one. I got one a week ago. Um, I have two <laughs> kids, and that's like the best purchase I have ever made. Oh yeah. So yeah, they love it. We both live in Market Common, and it's a we're two of many golf carts there. Love it. Yeah. Well, what else do you think people should know, especially because it's getting warmer? We're going to be seeing a lot more golf carts on the roads, right? Other cars need to be cognizant of the golf cart, but but if you're going to drive a golf cart, you really need to be careful. Yeah. You've 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 got to be aware of your surroundings. You have to be aware of the traffic conditions, um, you know, because people are going to get, they're gonna get impatient if they're behind a golf cart. If they can't pass, then they're gonna do something a little bit more risky. They're gonna try to pass the golf cart, which, which may cause problems. So for golf cart drivers, you, you just really need to be aware of your surroundings and be safe. Mm -hmm. um, and, my wife and I, we, we avoid the main thoroughfare, even yeah. though we could go, you know, we could get on Farrow Road and Market Common uh, with our golf cart, we, we choose not to. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go on sort of the back neighborhood roads. I'm not saying you have to do that, it's just, uh, it's just something we do because uh, we think it's a, a little bit safer. You mm, might want to listen to the attorney guys, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> now, if you want an adventure, you need to put Will's kids on the back of oh, your golf cart. Okay. Yeah, but that will, yeah. that, that, that's, not, that is an adventure. I am it? installing seat belts in my <laughs> golf cart, yes. Um, so I guess another, another thing, I, same thing, I don't, you can go any, um, on any road 35 miles an hour mm -hmm. under, um, but I don't think it's that wise. One thing I've noticed, and from some cases we've had involving golf carts, you don't have the ability to swerve out of the way. You can only, I mean, the lack of speed is, can be good in terms of the collision, but it also, you don't have time to avoid people. You don't have the ability to move out of the way. So um, you don't have to do this, but I typically will drive on the very far right to allow them to pass. Um, I think one thing we should also point out, if you're on a golf course and you're having some drinks, you're, you're you're probably okay. Ooh, a little bit different. That's a good one to mention, though. But then, when they get in their car, that's when the problem comes. So. I see. Yeah. yeah. You know, Will brought up a good point about swerving in golf cars. 
a terrible, terrible case we handled a couple of years ago involved someone who was going faster than they should have and a car pulled in front of them. They ended up swerving. Um, both people were ejected from the golf cart. The golf cart rolled over them. It was just a really, really bad situation. Uh, very, very significant injuries. So mm -hmm. you just got to be careful. Just yeah. be careful. It's that simple. You just got to be careful. I appreciate you guys sharing your tips for everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Where can people learn more information about you guys? If you, if you want a free consultation, please give us a call at 843-357-4111 or look us up on the web at beachinjurylawyers.com.